I'm getting nervous. Very emotional. <laughs> I don't want to cry. Between now and Monday, you want to labor? You're going to go in there, you're going to give it a try. Yeah. That head has to come out <clears throat> on its own. My water broke. Splash. We're never going to see him again. Welcome to Parenthood. Oh my god <laughs> this is going to be the intro to our labor and delivery vlog i'm currently okay i'm one day away from being 39 weeks which means that my due date is in a week and i feel like i haven't really shared my pregnancy i haven't really given you guys pregnancy updates obviously i've shared my pregnancy journey i guess but you guys don't really know what's going on behind the scenes so I just want to update you guys on what's been going on because from now on I'm going to be documenting until I give birth and I just want to give you guys like you know a little rundown of what's been going on <laughs> like I am so tired and so stressed don't let this makeup and hair fool you I don't even know how I had the strength to get up this you see I'm really breathing hard and do all this but I figured that for the intro I should look a bit decent because I'm gonna be looking crazy for the couple of next days. By the way, guys, I have my iPad here because I took notes because pregnancy brain is a real thing. But yeah, at 20 weeks, I had my anatomy scan and the big boy was measuring big in the 97 percentile, but they didn't think anything of it because they say that ultrasounds are not really accurate. So weeks went by and then I had another ultrasound at 32 weeks, another growth ultrasound to check if the baby was still measuring big. And indeed he was still measuring big you know so from then on my appointments were every two weeks and the next appointment i had after my growth scan was to talk about the growth scan by the way how it works with kaiser is that i have my primary care doctor and my primary ob doctor but when you're pregnant and they have to make appointments ahead of time they just give you the doctor that's available oh my god oh my god guys as I was filming this, I got a call from Kaiser to book my first postpartum postpartum appointment. Oh my god, this is getting real. This is getting real. But yeah, so like I said, I had different doctors. And I, I like that because I could get different opinions and not just one. The doctor, she was a woman and she's from Nigeria. And she was concerned about the baby's weight. Even though they kept telling me that ultrasounds may not always be accurate, they really felt that this was going to be a big baby. So she just gave me the risk and I'm going to put like, yeah, the, what she said, the notes. She gave me the risk of trying to deliver vaginally, but she said that it was my choice and they were not going to impose a C-section because they don't have the right to make you do what you don't want to do. But she told, talked to me about the risk of trying to deliver vaginally and the risk of having a C-section as well. So at 36 weeks, I started having weekly appointments and I met with another doctor and this one, he was a white, a white male doctor and he also had concerns about delivering vaginally because the baby just kept gaining weight. So their main concern was that the, I could hurt the baby. The baby could have shoulder dystocia. Is it dystocia? <laughs> dystocia while I tried to push him out. But they never discouraged me from having a vaginal delivery, but they just kept talking. We just kept talking back and forth, having an open conversations about the risk or whatnot. And then my next appointment was a week later. And between that week, I had gained eight pounds. And the lady I saw, she was Nigerian too. And she was concerned about the same thing. So that's three different doctors I've seen saying the same thing. Now my ears are wide open, you know what I mean? Even though they, they all told me that ultrasounds can be accurate sometimes, they firmly believe that this baby is going to be a big baby. And she measured me with her hands. She said that was more accurate than ultrasound. And the baby was really big. I think at that appointment, baby boy was like 8 pounds, 8.5 pounds. And she said he might be actually 9.5 because, you know, it's not accurate. So she was really nice. and she But she told me that if I was to try for a vaginal delivery and the baby was stuck she would not and she was a doctor on call she would not assist me with any clamps or stuff because that's too dangerous so i should keep that in mind and i was like okay and tato was there asking her questions we just kept talking more 
and more and then she decided to refer me to a high-risk doctor so I could have that like, peace of mind you know so they referred me to a high-risk doctor and I was really looking forward to that and honestly guys I really like this man because he was not pushy and he gave me options in summary he cannot predict shoulder dystopia because every like every pregnancy is different everybody's body is different if i want to try to have a vaginal delivery i'll need to gauge my labor so that i don't go too far and the baby gets stuck because if i'm doing a vaginal delivery he said i must push that baby out because they're not going to assist me and pull him out because they're going to hurt the baby and if he's already stuck and out and what we do what to do emergency c-section is not going to look good for me or the baby so we came up to, to a compromise that between now i have one week to go in labor naturally and if my water breaks even tomorrow i'm going to go try for a vaginal delivery but i have to keep in mind that it could end in the c-section but at least i would have tried and have that peace of mind if not he scheduled the surgery on my due date so i have a week and i don't know what's going to happen Will it be a vaginal delivery or will it be a C-section? I don't know. I don't know, guys. Like, I'm so... But, guys, I've not had contractions. I'm zero centimeter dilated. There's no signs of labor. There's no signs of labor. And I've tried it all, guys. The, uh, respiratory lifted or opera, jumping on the ball, exercising. You name it. This, this baby is not budging. He's too comfortable and he hasn't dropped. He's from here. Oh, hold on. See? I don't know if you can see. I can literally feel him here. Oh, my water hasn't broken. So if I don't go naturally by myself into labor, I'm having my baby by C-section on my due date. What the hell? But yeah, it's kind of. I feel like that was a good pro compromise, and I felt a bit in control because I'm trying to go into labor and the baby is not budging. But now that I have a plan of action, I feel more comfortable. Also, I did ask them about induction and they said that they don't induce until 41 weeks. And then the baby is only growing bigger and I don't want to be induced at 41 weeks. And then it, it might even end up being a cesarean anyways, a c-section. So what's the point, you know? So I, I was like, induction? Mm, I don't know if I want to do that. So What's the theme of the video again? I'm talking about uh, whether I'm going to have a vaginal or a c-section because I have a week. Oh, okay. You're talking about that. What's, what are your thoughts? Well... All I worry about is making sure my wife is healthy, safe, and making sure my son comes out healthy and safe too. I don't think anything less of you if we end up having to do any special surgeries. Special surgery? <laughs> you called it. Yeah, he told me that when I was in the hospital that he wouldn't think any less of me. Yeah, no, you're my queen regardless. You made this creature inside you. I can never do that. Whether yeah. you push it out or have a C-section, I can never do that still. Yeah. So the the worst surgery I had was that little lemon in the in my back. Yeah. That thing was like this big. I'm gonna be journaling. Is it journaling? Yeah, you're gonna be uh journaling or yeah, I guess that's the right word. Yeah, giving you guys updates from now till the baby is here. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> I'll let you get back to it, baby. Alright. I'm really ready to meet him, like what the hell? And they also told me to blame tattoo for the baby being big. <laughs> so it's his fault well yeah guys i am so nervous but excited next week i'm gonna be a mommy i mean i'm already one but i'm gonna actually be a mommy and i'm gonna try to vlog as much as i can the whole experience so yeah guys oh my god i'm nervous today is what day today is saturday, saturday. So we have till Wednesday. We have till Wednesday at the latest. If you decide to come early. I don't know how to feel. Yeah. You, you know what I'm it's saying? It's going to be wild. There's a mix of emotions. Exciting. Scared. You know, you, like, I want you to be healthy. I want him to be healthy. But then I can't wait to meet y'all. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or meet him. Obviously, I've, I've already you met really you. You already met me? Yeah, I've met you in more ways than one. Baby. Um, but nevertheless, yeah, I'm excited. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know how to feel. And as I'm sitting here relaxing, I have all these thoughts. I think that's why I don't know how to relax. Yes. Because I don't want to think about something. Yeah, you don't know how to chill. <laughs> you don't know how to let your mind rest and just turn off and just relax. But that's a sign of uh, the hustler in you. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm a hustler. Like, you're, you're ready to, to make moves, make sure we're doing what we need to do. 
that's how you keep life going forward. Yeah. I'm just scared, like, how a dynamic will change. Well, we're going to find out when Lil Man's here. Because he is going to occupy a lot of time. I just, I just don't want it to be all... I mean, it's going to be what it is, right? Yeah. I mean, he's going to teach me a lot of things I didn't know about myself. He's going to teach you things, too. And then we got to figure out how to get along. Because you know you begin all up in your feelings sometimes when I'm right. Uh, excuse me. You need help. I'm always right. Mm -hmm. when, when was the last time I was wrong? When you decided not to talk to me. Remember? When you were not interested in me when we first met. But I was persistent. And I came back and you were like, okay, you're right. But that was two years ago. <laughs> yeah, I made sure you never made a bad decision again. Shut up. <laughs> you crazy. I feel like it should be chaotic, kind of, because we're getting close to my due date. Yeah. But then it's like, nothing is happening. You watch too many movies. Because when it comes, it will get chaotic. But you're just anticipating all, like, the, the, the script writing with everybody else going crazy. <laughs> oh, you're right. I, I was expecting this drama field. Yes. Like, uh, this drama field experience leading to labor. And... I think we've done a great job at allowing our families to know and be a part of as much of our pregnancy as possible, mm -hmm. but still keep our stress level low. Yeah, that's true. So. Also, you've been a good partner. You haven't stressed me too much, so. That's right. Oof. This girl. Baby! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> oh, dude, seriously, though. The struggle is real when you have a stomach. Are you see? Are you mocking me? That's her. <laughs> Yeah, because it's hard to get off the bed. <laughs> You're so rude. Oh. You're so rude. Oh. <laughs> You're so freaking Baby, rude. You're not going to help me. You're so rude. Ah! That's how, that's how you, you think I'm a drama queen? <laughs> You're this baby. No, no, no. It, it's crazy because we didn't realize how useful this headboard was going to be for her. Yeah. But like when she's getting in bed, she grips that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. With her life. And she's like... But you got all this in the way. It's like you can't even use your abs. So I don't I have abs. It. Right, they're gone. Like he's just like using them as pillows right now. <laughs> That's his like quilted comforter. That was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> right, I can't help with the noise. <laughs> and you just like, are you okay? Like I'll be and you push me with your arm. I'd be like taking my arm and putting it on her shoulder. I'm like, hey, you got this, you got this. Hey guys, we are three days away from my scheduled C section. I'm getting nervous. Very emotional. <laughs> I don't want to cry. Mm. So far, like, nothing has happened. My water hasn't broken. I'm not dilated. And it just feels like I've been pregnant forever. And the only thing that keeps me in high spirits is my baby boy moving. He's been moving a lot, so that makes me feel good. Because... In my second trimester, I wasn't really feeling him as much because I have an anterior placenta. But yeah, I'm trying to be strong. And I just want to show you guys what's in my hospital bag. So yeah, this is what I've packed so far. This is baby boy's clothes. Because they said that I'll be in the hospital for at least two days after my C-section. If I have a C-section. <laughs> yeah. So here are his clothes. Then I'm bringing three sets of PJs. This one, you guys have probably seen me wear it in the videos. So yeah. This one is like a maternity set. Pretty much it's for after when the baby is born. For easy breastfeeding because he has like holes in here. But yeah, it's like a shirt. And then you can open here to breastfeed. So that would be really useful. And all of these are extra large because I want to be comfortable, especially if they have to open me up. Ooh. Ooh la la. Nursing bras. I have to add more, but yeah, I have nursing bras. And then in this bag, I have all my postpartum essentials for down there. Because I said that even if you have a C-section, you're still going to bleed. This is the peri bottle. And other good stuff. For mommy, because you know... We have to take care of ourselves as well, so. For baby necessities, I didn't really bring a lot. 
I don't think I'm gonna take a lot to the hospital. I just bought this pacifier because you'll have most of what I need, right? I have his clothes. They're gonna have diapers over there. They're gonna have everything the baby needs. So I don't think I need to take much. This is the dirt bag for any dirty laundry I have. I got a long USB cable so I can connect my phone. I'll also be taking my iPad, my water. I'm taking these slides in case I take a shower there. Let me see, I'll probably have to take a shower. I don't know. I'm gonna pack socks. The hospital gave me a breast pump, so I think I'm gonna take it there and start pumping. <laughs> they gave me the Amida breast pump. All the parts are in here. But I also have like an electronic one, like a portable breast pump. And I'll take it there because I want to try it, which one works best. So yeah. Hopefully, guys, I'm able to pump. Or have a good supply. I'm a bit scared about that. Oh Lord. I'm about to have a panic attack right now. Like, I'm so stressed. Oh, actually, hold on. I also got these large undies for after the C-section. Yeah. Okay, it's not going to be pretty. So yeah, I got this so that I can be comfortable and I'm going to bring normal underwears as well. And I haven't packed my toiletries yet because I'm still using my toothbrush, soap and everything. But I'll pack all of that. I think that's all. I don't want to pack too much because I figure the hospital will have enough of what I need. Besides, the bill is probably going to be expensive so I might as well take as much as I can from the hospital. Because when they'll be sending the bill, they don't care. Oh, they don't care. I'm also gonna take burp cloths for the baby, but I don't want to bend down. But yeah, guys, that's a little update. Hopefully, there's more updates leading to my due date. So, yeah, guys, pray for me. I'm nervous. It's our last day. As regular parents, what? What? It's a married couple, regular married couple. Yeah, it's our last day, just two of us. It's just the two of us. How do you feel? I feel excited. You know, I get to have somebody in my life to get a share a child with. And this is going to be beautiful. Tomorrow, we're officially going to be three. Yeah, going to be three. Just the three of us. It's my stomach the last time. Look. You guys don't judge. It's getting dark, but... It's the last time you're going to see that, that balloon-filled stomach. Next thing you know, we're going to have a baby in our arms. Yeah, today we're gonna be fighting over uh, custody. <laughs> Shut up! I was so emotional. I cried a lot. Yeah. Also, I'm in a lot of pain. Yeah. Today was not a good day for me. It feels like he's stretching. My skin can't take it no more. I don't know. Yeah. I think she's actually feeling maybe some contraction. Contractions, some early contractions. Yeah, cause early. I'm forty weeks. <laughs> Late contractions. I had back pain and then cramping, like, on my side stomach. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. But tomorrow morning, we're going to go in. She's going to get her pre-checks done. She's going to go into labor. They're going to... No, I'm not going to labor. They're going to... They're going to do a C-section. C-section. And in a matter of an hour or so... He's going to be in our arms. Uh, by the way, guys, his mom called today. And I just found out that this dude here yes. was born by emergency C-section because he was too big. I mean, I kept telling you I was a large child. Y'all wouldn't believe me. But you never told me that your mom got you. Uh, your mom. Well, I didn't know those details. Or at least if I did, I didn't remember those details. You don't know your own birth story. I know almost everything except for that piece. Yeah, well, she told me that. You were too big, so they had, and your heart was dropping, so they had to have an emergency, emergency. And situation. I was the last kid, so. Yeah. Which your mom had four kids, so you yeah. had four kids. So the whole, if you have one, it makes it easier to have another one. Doesn't always work. If you have a big baby, 
big babies cause problems. Yeah. Because if he tries to come out the other way. You don't want <laughs> Look at you. You want to rip that thing apart. So what? Uh, I'm trying to get a crack at that thing as soon as I can. Uh, you have six weeks to wait. You better wait. Countdown. Huh? Countdown. <laughs> Look at you. Put a reminder in my phone. But yeah, I'm excited. It's past 12. Yes. So I officially, I can't eat anything until after the surgery. Yeah. But I um, I think in the morning, you can have like a small sip when you take your medicine. Yeah, I have to take my, my medicine. Yeah. So. Small sip of water. And I count, on you, I count on you to take good footage because I won't be having my phone. Oh, yeah. At the beginning. So you I'm going to be the bag man and the cameraman. Batman? Bagman. Yeah, Bagman. You have to bring my yeah. bags. Look, my hospital bag is packed. Where's your bag? Mine's on the couch. Yeah. It's got all my electronics inside of it. By the way, guys, please watch this video in its entirety because we need to pay the hospital bill. <laughs> we need to pay the hospital bill, but yeah, anyways. Please. <laughs> Just watch the video and like it. That's all. Yes, of course. <laughs> Just have fun. Enjoy us. Good night. Good night. See you guys tomorrow on the next clip. My water broke. Splash. I am not ready. She is not ready. She's been going through contractions. So right now she's feeling a little better, so she's okay to film. But we are on our way to the hospital. Like today, it was always meant to be today. My water broke on the day I'm supposed to have my C-section. Yep. And now they're asking me to come in because it's such a weird feeling when your water breaks. It just keeps coming in gushes. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought I would have time to wake up in the morning. You guys, I look crazy. <laughs> I was saying that my week is hold, holding on to dear life. We haven't even slept yet. So yeah, we haven't slept. Be ready for it. Oh my God. We're never going to sleep again. Welcome to Parenthood. Like I said earlier, I wasn't feeling good, so it was contractions this whole time I was feeling today. Yes. I had no idea. Yeah. She was going through it today, man. She was feeling good, then she was feeling bad, then she was feeling okay, then she was feeling tired. Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm nervous, guys. Why are you nervous, baby? I wasn't ready. <laughs> Just the two of us. Check in. Yeah, how many pills? Back to the diaper. Yep. You gotta sit on top of it. Alright, guys. So, my water is leaking still. The nurse, she came over, she gave me a cervical check. It was so painful to see if I was dilated. And then she put the IV in me. It's currently three. She said that they'll give me my C-section earlier. And the doctors and I'm still just gonna see me around four. So, we're gonna make little one soon. The surgeon came in postponed the, the appointment <laughs> the surgery for two more hours because I have four fibroids and they're quite big and she's worried about cutting through them during the c-section so she's waiting for a bigger team to come basically when the next shift is coming in yeah. so the morning shift is coming so there's more people to help yeah so yeah need to make sure they have extra hands on deck. You should be nervous if they want to do this without the extra help. It's good to always have extra hands in the OR. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guys. I have contractions. My back is hurting. This IV is hurting me. I'm tired. I'm uncomfortable. It's going to be okay, baby. Fifteen now in the morning, and I've been feeling 
those contractions. They keep pushing back the C-section. They, they pushed it back to 7.30, right? Yeah. And they gave me, they added one more. So this is the IV I had here, they put it here. And they added one more IV because apparently I'm high risk for having a blood transfusion. Yeah. I've got fibroids. Yeah. So just in case I need a blood transfusion, they gave me a second IV. How do you feel? I feel good. You know, I just want to make sure you're able to get through this whole thing. Okay, though, soon this is all gonna be done. Okay, just hang in there just a little while longer. The contractions are killing me. But you're strong. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to sleep off the time and speed this thing up. You know how it goes, right? <laughs> Wake up and have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I say that to the kids. How fun our adventure. Now after working with you, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that little shark face. They said I can't take any video, but I can take pictures. Do they know who they talking to? <laughs> it's okay, let it out. Let it out. You know, it's okay, buddy. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, buddy. Daddy loves you. Okay. You'll see mommy soon. Look at y'all. Y'all are so beautiful. Look at these lips. Oh, get that picture. Uh-huh. You see that, that lip? Yeah. Stick that lip out, buddy. He's so freaking cute. Oh my gosh, that's my son. He knows that's your that's son, baby. He knows your voice, mama, when you talk to him. Mm hmm He knows your voice. Oh, look at y'all. God, guys, as you guys have seen from the previous clip, I am so tired, but I have my baby boy. I can't even walk because of the epidural, because I numb my body from my stomach to my legs. I can eat. I have a catheter because I can't use the bathroom. And I want to sleep so bad, but I can't until Tato gets back. So, oh. This is C-section recovery is no joke, oh. No joke. Also, I breastfed baby boy and it was a struggle. It was, he's so fussy. Oh my God, guys. Pray for me, guys, oh my God. He's so calm now, look, he's just like, all right, cool, so what's going on, guys? What are we doing? Eh, eh, eh. He's learning. Look at him. Go ahead, buddy. He's like doing some step dancing. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be a dad? Well, I haven't really looked at my bank statement yet. Shut up. <laughs> no, it's really rewarding. It's very emotional. A lot of feelings I didn't think I'd be feeling. I never knew I'd feel. All right? Yeah. We have protecting at all costs. Yeah, that's right. Hey, you okay? And you have two crazy parents. <laughs> that's one crazy parent. Who is crazy? Me or you? You have to ask. If we're not crazy together, then it's not me the crazy one, it's you. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I think everybody knows I'm the same one. Whatever.
You drive me crazy then. Mm -hmm. Look at this man smiling. He's smiling? <laughs> you had dimples, buddy? Oh my god, you think he's gonna have dimples? I don't think so. Wow, he didn't take after you. And if he dies, the dimples go up. Huh? Yeah, he's just gonna have fat cheeks. Wow, I completely forgot. I really thought he's gonna have dimples. It's your fault. How is it my fault? Because you don't got dimples. This baby is like 20% me, 80% you. It's okay, my son has. You know, overcome other challenges, and he will overcome that challenge. Of not having dimples. Yes. How is that challenge? This one. Look at this one. So you, you just forget about me now, huh? <laughs> I was just a baby carrier. Yeah. The UPS. You need you help. Brought my package to me. Shut now up. I get to enjoy it. <laughs> it took you nine months, though. I'm not paying pay, pay for that kind of shipping again. Shut up. It, <laughs> it took me ten months. Ten months, guys, not nine months. Yeah. Right. Is that that's your fault you didn't pay the express fee? But good things take time. You're in love. He's knocked out. He's knocked out. Wow, guys. Today is three days post op. So it's three days after the surgery. And I've been in the hospital recovering. But yeah, it, it, the whole thing just went, it was just crazy. So. I just want to let you guys know what happened when I entered the surgery room. I was freaking out because the anesthesiologist told me that they were going to numb me from here to my legs and I wouldn't be able to move my legs. And one of my biggest phobias is not being able to move any part of my body. It makes me go into panic attacks. Especially, you guys know when you wake up in the morning and one of your arms is numb and you're like, yeah, I hate that. So as we were going in, they were prepping me and I started crying. So when they had to give me the epidural, Tato couldn't come in with me. So he was waiting outside. But after the epidural was done, he was able to enter. Anyways, once they were giving me the epidural, I was crying. They're like, what's wrong? I was like, I'm freaking out. I'm so scared. Then the anesthesiologist was like, you'll be fine. Don't worry. I was like, I can't breathe. She said, no, I see you can breathe. And then she tried to distract me. And then the surgeon came and she was like, how you feeling and i was like i'm freaking out i'm freaking out and she said are you are you a christian i said yes she said can, can we pray together i said yes so she prayed with me a c-section whether planned or not it's scary i was so scared i was like what am i doing what am i doing what am i doing i'm so scared then tato came in and then i was just asking tato to distract me and you guys know in the when you're doing c-section you, you can't see what's happening because they put like this big curtain in front of you so I was just looking into Tato's eyes while they're pulling and talking. I could feel poor, but I couldn't feel any pain. And the anesthesiologist put some music and then everybody was just cracking jokes to make me feel better. So I was trying to relax, you know, and then I was just looking at Tato. And then once they pulled our baby boy out, Tato's eyes became watery. He's like, he's here. He was like, he's here. And I was looking at Tato because I couldn't see. And then they brought the baby up and I could see him. I was like, that's my mini me. I created a life. And then they took him to the side with Tato. Tato cut the umbilical cord, but they were still stitching me up. And I don't know if I showed the clips, but they were concerned because I have four fibroids and she said two of them are big. So they were worried about cutting through them and making me bleed. But once they opened me up, the fibers were not even the issue. I was bleeding a lot because of my endometriosis. And she asked me, do you know you have endometriosis? I was like, yeah. So I, I think my endometriosis got worse, but it's so worth it because I have my little buddy here. <laughs> so they suctioned out the blood and then they stitched me back up. And then they brought my baby to me. Oh my God, guys, he's so cute. He's the cutest little thing. So baby boy was born at 8.22 a.m weighing 9.82 pounds and 21 inches of pure love. <laughs>